Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. I've titled this, The Rich Young Man. Now this story is also recorded in the gospel according to Mark in chapter 10, and also in the gospel according to Luke chapter 18. Before we start this um, account in Matthew, we should probably take note of a general observation of life. It really is a rare thing for someone who's young and rich to be concerned about the future or another world. So let's look at verse 16 and 17. And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Now, if this man recognized goodness in Jesus, it was because Jesus is God. And Jesus answered him about life, not eternal life. And he says the secret there is obedience. Now, verses 18 and 19. And he said to him, the young man said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, Jesus is quoting from Exodus chapter 20, verses 12 through 16. And he gives him the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the fifth of the Ten Commandments. You might want to wonder, why is that out of order? And then he adds to the end of these, the last portion of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, why would he do it this way? Probably to put some special emphasis on it. Maybe we could paraphrase what he's saying is, so have you really honored your mother and father? What's your personal relationships like? What do you think of your fellow man? Well, let's look at verse 20. The young man said to him, all these I have kept. What do I still lack? Well, his answer betrays his self-righteousness and pride. He is depending on following the letter of the law. And verse 21, Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Now, we have here Jesus granting the young man's supposition that he has followed the letter of the law and that he's kept it. But the young man has already acknowledged that he lacks something. So we should note now that Jesus does not require everyone who wishes to be a disciple to give up everything. Peter still had a house and boat after he became a disciple. Joseph of Arimathea was still a rich man after he became a disciple. But Jesus treats each person as an individual and he goes to the heart of each person's problem. This man's problem was his riches. And he probably, the young man probably thought about, well, I have kind of made riches my God. And so therefore he was in violation of the very first commandment to have no other gods before the Lord God. Now, verse 22, <clears throat> when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful because he had great, great possessions. Well, the demand of Christ is the same for all who want to be his disciples. It's to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and to follow him. Perhaps the need that this young man felt and the questions he asked Jesus are ones that are, you're grappling with. He thought that the fullness of life and its continuation could be accomplished by grasping certain things, by doing certain things, certain good things, perhaps maybe even one really good thing. That, my friend, is called legalism, and it requires perfection. And there's only one who's perfect, that's God. And the perfection he requires is not only in doing all the deeds, but thinking about all the deeds correctly and saying that you're going to do them and not going the opposite way. You're not going to be able to achieve that in this lifetime, and neither am I. But the Lord has made a way. He said, you need to change your attitude. And that's what we call repent. And you need to believe, and this is what we call faith in Jesus Christ, that he has paved the way. He has paid that debt for your imperfection, both for the past for now and for the future. 
Now, I've got a little assignment for you if you still have some doubts. I'd like you to read Romans chapter 3, and in particular, verses 19 to 31. 